I am Sheetal Godbole. I am a GP in South Gloss and I am the EDI fellow for BNSSG Training Hub. Welcome to Good News BNSSG, brought to you by the Training Hub, where we aim to showcase some of the great initiatives and projects going on in primary care within our area. In this episode, we will be spotlighting the careers of some of our primary care nurses. Let us start with Jenny and Helen, our brilliant legacy nurses. I started my nursing journey back in 1980 um, and I did my training at French Hospital in Bristol, which sadly is no more. Um, and I qualified in 1984. Um, and uh, at that time, we got sent to jobs. Um, and so I was sent to work in neuro theatres at Frenchay. And I worked there for about nine years. I was another one that one, always wanted to be a nurse. I think from an early age, unfortunately, I had quite a lot of surgery in my teens and I was told that I couldn't do it. Um, and I, it wouldn't, I wouldn't be physically able to do it. I had a lot of hip surgery, um, but I actually proved them wrong and I really wanted to do it. I looked at lots of other things and I really, you know, didn't want to do that. So actually I said, <laughs> you know, I, I fought to do it. So I ended up getting into a course um, in Lancaster. So I was from Essex originally um, and did my, it was a traditional training along with the degree as well. So it was really quite new then. So that was 1992. So quite a new course at that point, but yeah, went up to Lancaster and then ended up doing all my placements in Cumbria, which was a bit of a shock because uh, <laughs> I thought I was just going up to Lancaster. <laughs> Although I really loved doing theatre nursing, I missed the patient contact. So I worked on a neurosurgical ward and a neuromedical ward. And then I went off and did some traveling for a little while um, in Australia. Then I came and then I went and did the um, theatre nursing um, qualification in Southampton. Uh, and um, then I worked in Southampton and cardiac thoracic surgery. So I finished my nurse training after four years in um, 1996 and then moved down to Bath with another few people from my course. Um, started the RUH um, and did uh, orthopaedics, trauma orthopaedics. Um, liked it, but wasn't an awful lot of support. So I ended up, my passion really was oncology and haematology. So I moved across to the oncology centre and was there for about six years. Although in that time I had a break um, for a year, went to Australia and worked in the outback and, you know, far north Queensland in lots of different, you know, quite sort of remote places, going out with the flying doctors and all sorts of things. And that was brilliant. That was a really good experience of working with children, animals at some point, because they didn't have vets. <laughs> so the hospital would do it all. And I actually got married, had started having a family, and I was working in um, uh, Avon Orthopaedic Centre in Southmead Hospital. Um, so I was doing some nights there for a while. And then I uh, worked in the cardiology department at the BRI. I liked the fast pace and the acuteness of the work. Um, I really enjoyed that. Um, and then after that, um, I, hours wise and everything, um, I talked to somebody at the cardiac cardiology who knew about a, an opening um, for practice nursing and I thought that I would enjoy it. Um, I, I was actually a patient at the surgery that I went to work at um, and I watched how they worked and I thought that I'd quite like to do that sort of work and I went to Gloucester Road Medical Centre and I was there for 17 years uh, and I was the lead nurse there. I was, um, I did the asthma diploma, I did the um, COPD diploma. Um, so that was a really good experience, I think, of, for that, of, of looking at tropical med medicine, but also just treating everybody quite holistically from birth to death, um, really sort of inspired my sort of love of wanting to do primary care at some point. It was the nearest thing to that experience. So I came back in a way to Bristol after my year in Australia, um, ended up doing a, a couple of years um, within that and then went up to the hospice. Um, it, it just uh, that uh, palliative care, again, was part of the oncology role. I had my children um, and they were quite young and that didn't particularly fit in with with um, work, really. <laughs> so I ended up looking for something else. And again, the, the primary care thing came back again. Um, and just of sort of, you know, hours that would fit in, but sort of just working with lots of different, a real wide population. I felt that I was going to end my career just working, working in primary care, which I loved doing. Um, but I didn't see that there was any, that there was another job for me. 
Um, and actually coming to this role has really energized me and has made me realize that um, I can step up, I can do this work, and I've really enjoyed it. It's been great. I've really enjoyed meeting, going to different surgeries, meeting new people, um, working with all this sort of diverse group of, of nurses has been really interesting. It's been really good. So yeah, I've been working in primary care for the last 15 years um, and in, in a number of different practices, working up to lead nurse um, to the last two practices and then the opportunity for a legacy nurse came up and that just really seemed to capture everything that I'd wanted to do. I'm really passionate about primary care and just making sure people, you know, have a good experience and that we keep hold of people. We've been really aware that the nursing population particularly is going up and people are retiring and we're not, we haven't got those new skills coming in. Um, so even though the legacy <laughs> term sounds a bit like we're right at the end, as Helen said, for me, I've still got another sort of probably 10, 15 years to go yet anyway um, but actually being able to share my experience now while I you know when I can um, has been great. When I first started nursing in 1980 it was very much you know we still had um, matrons we still the sister ruled the ward so there was an awful lot of um, I remember one of the sisters saying to me Jennifer when we're in a rush we must quicken our pace <laughs> and it was very regimented and very sort of strict which you know was was good but you know different and it was it was still quite an autonomous role. We weren't at university. We trained on the wards, which I think was a great training. And it's almost the way now that the apprentices are doing their work, their training, um, that, you know, we had eight weeks on the ward and then we had two weeks in school. And that was right from the very start all the way through. So you worked on a complete different variety of wards. Um, and I think it was a great training. Um, uh, yeah, so I think it's changed enormously. Now, I think uh, the nurses have got so much more responsibility. I think I just managed to meet the right people and get the right people involved to be able to keep me in it. But I think, you know, it would have been amazing to have somebody outside that could have said, this isn't right. You know, this is you need support um, or to be able to work with me. Um, you know, would have been great in the same person just to see me through. And I think that's that's the advantage of what Helen and I have been doing. We're, we're forming relationships with the nurses coming through and hopefully that will carry on after the two years and we'll be able to support them through their careers. Primary care, nursing is very important going forward. I think we've got a huge role to play and I think that role will only get bigger as time goes on. We want more nurses to come into primary care and I think if we can pass on, we've I've got, you know, a whole wealth of knowledge from the nursing I've done, but definitely in the last 17 years. And it's great to be able to pass that knowledge on to, to encourage these nurses to move forward. Such interesting careers. And it's amazing to see how the identity of nursing has changed over the years. And it also goes to show how flexible careers in primary care can be. In our other story for today, we hear from Kerry, who recently got a very special award. So when I was younger, I think I always wanted to be a nurse. And I did my GCSEs, got my five GCSEs, and then applied to do nursing when I was 17. And... I got in to UE. Uh, I did that for three years and then I qualified when I was 21. And from there, I worked in the RUH in Bath and I worked on their acute medical ward, orthopedic ward, and I did rotation posts into emergency medicine. And I was there for about 16 years. And in between that time, I did a bit of GP service as well. So I loved working in GP land. So I did half uh, emergency medicine and half general practice. And when I started my nurse training, I had an amazing uh, nurse matron who was very much, you have to wear your hat and your top button done up and your belt buckle and you had to look the part and look smart and you had tasks to do during the day and it was a very sort of regimented ward and however much people think that's a bit wouldn't necessarily do it now I actually really took a lot of value from that because it enabled me to have those standards of care so that everything was done the wards were really tidy and the appearance of, of being a nurse so nursing has definitely changed but for me it's for the better because it's given us more opportunities for us to go into different roles nurses 
I think historically were seen as the sort of the handmaidens to doctors. So there's things that they did. And there's very defined roles of what nurses would do and what doctors would do. Um, uh, so traditionally, nurses wouldn't do something called an ECG, which is an echocardiogram. That was all done by the doctors, whereas over time, nurses were doing it. And now even healthcare assistants are doing it. So we're now going into levels of practice of nurses whether you're a registered nurse or a novice nurse that's just started or an enhanced nurse practitioner or an advanced nurse practitioner. And now we're moving into that sort of consultant level. Each of them now comes with that academic element behind them to ensure that they've got that governance and standards and that knowledge from that academic level, but also then able to evidence their capabilities of practice to make sure that they're safe within their working environment. So the Queen's Award is from the Queen's Nurse Institute. So it's a registered charity. And the registered charity started in the 1800s. Queen Victoria gave them a, a massive pot of money to essentially provide district nurses a qualification. And the, it's a charity now. And the Queen's Nurse title, which is what they're calling it, is given to those that recognition of the leaders that are within the community. And it, it allows us to have those... Um, opportunities to network with other leaders within the community, but also opportunities for development and education, particularly around leadership, and also things to do with um, research and quality improvement. You know, we don't say it often enough, but I'm actually really proud because I think that from my perspective, I've worked really hard, I've been in the NHS for quite a long time, it feels like. And this is one thing that I could apply for to give that evidence and you sort of that reflective evidence. So you can look back on all the stuff that you've done. And you think, Craggy, did I do all of that? And then actually have um, a colleague or a patient verify that you are at that level, you have done those things. Actually makes you feel really proud of all the stuff that you've done. And it also gives you that little boost going forward because you think, yeah, I always wanted to be a nurse. I've got that sort of, it's a bit of a personal recognition, but also that drive to move forward to make sure that you can ensure that other people can get that award and that title as well, but also that you can continue to deliver that high standard of care to your patients. Wasn't that absolutely lovely? Huge congratulations to Kerry and all the other nurses in our area who received the Queen's Award in recent years. That's all for today. I hope these videos have given you some inspiration or just made you see that the great things are happening in BNSSG or given you a reason to smile. If you'd like to share your good news with us, check out the description box for our details or scan the QR code here. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.